Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video is all about Whisperer. I really learned the boss, I got to use the Banner Bow for the first time, and I got up to 200 KC. Since the league ended about a month ago, all I've been doing since coming back to the main game is bossing, bossing, bossing. It's been TOA, Muspa, Whisperer, and maybe a little bit of AFK Karamba on fishing too. Just a little bit. But since the league ended, I haven't taken the time to just relax and chill and do some non-click intensive stuff, aka non-bossing stuff, like collection log for example. Or in this case, I guess you can probably tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be going for 500 medium clue scrolls. Not getting to 500, but opening 500 in this video. I'm currently at 134 mediums opened, and between me and my teammate, neither of us have gotten ranger boots. Over 9400 hours of playtime for me alone or as the Dragon Ball fans would say, over 9,000 hours of playtime without their Ranger Boots, but that changes this video. Hopefully. I mean, I don't know, this isn't a voiceover, I am recording this in real time, so hopefully that's some positive foreshadowing for when we do the opening. I believe I am legally required to disclose the fact that I don't actually need to collect the full 500 mediums in this video, because I've already been stacking them for... I think a year now? Yeah, ever since I maxed, I did a big clue opening right after I maxed, and I had no caskets left after that. So these 367 mediums are the product of a year of passively collecting them from Slayer, Birdhouses, and Skilling mostly. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say at least 250 of them are from fishing Karambwans. Whenever I fish Karambwans, I normally don't leave for clues, except if it's medium. Sometimes if I get an easy, I'll go do it, but every single time I get a medium clue while fishing, I always go and get it done right away before going back to fish another inventory. But yeah, the fact I already have a bunch done doesn't change anything about the video, because I'll still show you the method I end up doing. This is just going to save me a bunch of time having to collect them all in this one video. But you know, that's kind of the point of watching OSRS YouTube videos, right? You don't have to sit through the long grinds yourself, you just get to see the good parts, the exciting parts, the ranger boots part, hopefully. Now before I get started with this, I just want to show I have all the medium stash units built and filled, so I don't have to worry about any of that. The method I'll be doing is hunting implings in Puro Puro. You can ignore my inventory and gear for now since I'm just starting, but once I'm a few hours or maybe a day into doing this, I should have the method down, and then I'll be able to show you how it goes. The impling jars do break sometimes when you open them up, so in order to get more impling jars, I could cast the Hunter Kit spell, but I figure it's less effort and should be quicker to just buy the jar generators from Elnok. And each time you do this, you can get 33 impling jars from each one. By the way, I changed my mind. I am going to do the Hunter Kit spell to get impling jars, and you could only have one Hunter Kit in your inventory at a time. You can deposit the Hunter Kits without opening them, but I'm just going to open them as I go. I got the bank fillers in the bank so I can keep the runes in my inventory. There is a bit of a delay after you cast the spell. You can't open the bank right away. Every time you open an impling jar, there's a 10% chance that it breaks, and medium clues are 1 in 25 from Eclectics. So if the math is correct, then that means for every medium clue, on average, you'll go through 2.5 impling jars. So to get 100 medium clues, I would expect to go through 250 impling jars. I need 125 more medium clues, so if all that math is correct, that would mean that I would need about 312 more impling jars in order to get the stack up to 500. But of course I'd want to have more just to be safe, and because I wouldn't want to do my last few trips with like 5 jars in my inventory. And yes, it is very important that I have these earth runes in my inventory even though I have the earth staff equipped. I was talking to Spook Dog, I was telling her what I was up to, and she said that she had a bunch of impling jars that she could give me, so let's check the group storage, see how many we have in here. 752! I didn't even have to make any of my own impling jars if I knew there was going to be that many from Spook Dog. Holy, talk about an impling jar stimmy. It's kind of nice to have a lot of impling jars, so that way I can stack up some of my extra eclectics in the bank when I dump my inventory, and I could do those clues later. You'll see what I mean later on when I show the method. I was reading the wiki, and it turns out in March of 2023, they changed the wheat so that by default you don't gain strength XP when you push through it. So if you want to gain the strength XP again, if you're not a skiller or something, then you got to talk to Elnok. And now when I push through, I get the massive strength gains. Ooh, now it's time for the fun part. I get to show you how I'm doing this method. I have the bank tag plugin and the bank tag layouts plugin, so I can easily swap between my eclectic hunting setup and my medium clue setup, which in this case, I only switch my inventory, not what I'm wearing. I'm not using my magic butterfly net because it's the same catch rate as catching implings barehanded, and with level 99, I can catch everything barehanded. And in this case, with eclectics, it is a 100% chance catch. 
saturate. The left click on the wheat by default is walk here. So you could swap it to be left click push through, but I misclick on it so much. And I also use the wheat. I click on the wheat to get back to my starting tile. So it's not worth it, but you could make it shift click. There's four eclectic impling spawns. I don't know which one's actually the best, but I go to the west one personally. I know with the north spawn, you don't have to go through as much wheat but its main spawn point is on the wheat rather than in the aisle. So it might get away more often or even spawn in another aisle because it seems like sometimes the implings spawn one tile over from their main spawn tile. There's always a few eclectics flying around and once you confirm the one that spawns on this tile, I'd recommend tagging that specific impling so that way you immediately know which one is the right one every time you come back. Every time I show myself in Puro Puro, people always have to comment about the fact that I have all the implings named and color coded with the implings plugin rather than removing the lower tier ones. I just like having them all tagged, okay? Off me, bro. And you can see here, whenever an impling gets away from me, I use the Dark Lure spell on the Archaea spellbook, which makes that impling head towards you. If you want, you could use Dark Lure in between catching eclectics to bring in other implings that drop clues, like gourmet implings, for example, have a 1 in 25 chance for easy clues. So you could go for an easy and a medium clue every trip but I'm not in a particular rush for easy clues, I'm just going for the mediums. I open the implings until I get a medium, and once I get it, I fill up the rest of the jars with eclectics before I leave. I usually end up with very close to 25 extra eclectic jars each trip, sometimes a couple jars break, and because they're 1 in 25, I'm basically getting two medium clues per trip rather than one. And I tell you back to the crafting guild, I dump my whole inventory, all the eclectics and everything into the bank, I quickly use the bank tag layout to switch my inventory, and go get my clue done. I'm gonna wait until I fill up most of the jars with eclectics before I eventually spam them all for medium clues. It's so easy for me to get these done quick with minimal inventory loadout because between my, the stuff in the POH like the spirit tree, fairy ring, jewelry box, nexus, as well as the diary cape, diary gear, and max cape, that's most of the teleports. Oh and so I don't forget to show it later, here's my gear setup if you were curious. There's a dragon impling. Someone, someone else is fighting that, is that what they call it? You're fighting the impling? I'm sure they need it more than I do. Whoa. They added a banker to the bank chest in the crafting guild. About time our GE tax gets put to work. And by our GE tax, I mean yours because I don't use the GE. And I am just about out of the impling jars, so it's time to open up the eclectics. I'm currently at four, <laughs> nice, 420 medium caskets. I have 1,072 eclectics and at a rate of one out of 25, that means I should get about 40 or slightly over 40 mediums done from this amount. Let's do a little price check. I'm kind of curious what this is worth. <laughs> over 5 mil. I thought it was interesting and it makes sense. I ha I've opened 959 and all of these should have been opened in Puro Puro. So it makes sense these should be equal. In fact, I should have less of the impling jars than I do of the implings I've already opened in Puro Puro. Because on average for every 25 I open, every one clues 25, I should only bring home or bring to the bank like 23 or 24 eclectics. But I have more of these than of these. It's unimportant anyways, I'm going to get started on these. I could spam open the implings to get the clue really fast. And there is a thing I'll show you when I get a clue, it stops you from opening them uh, if you already have that type of clue in your inventory. Okay, here I got the clue and if I try to open one, I get this message, there's a warning. But the reason why I don't spam click to open them is simply because of the loot tracker. It won't track the numbers properly. It might say I've opened less eclectics than I actually have and I want to keep it as accurate as possible. No way. There's a game update about to happen, and with this update, they're going to be converting all the event items from forestry into GP. I feel like there's some way that I could abuse this, but I don't know how much GP the stuff is going to convert to. Maybe not, but uh, I'll just take all this stuff out and we'll see how much GP I get for it, hopefully, if it actually shows up in my inventory. Oh, that's a lot of GP. I was expecting to have like 100 GP in my inventory. All right, well, let's take a look at the news post. So this week they added barbarian farming, which means you could plant seeds without a seed dipper and automatically destroy plant pots when you plant trees. And they made barbarian training into a mini quest. Wait, let's take a look at that. Oh no, we have to get the mini quest cape. That's so weird, this strange plant grew on top of the spawn for the eclectic. I'm like, let me catch it, but it's the plant there. This is it, that's the last casket. Let's take a look, medium. 500 medium clues 
take a screenshot that real quick for the thumbnail. I'm surprised this whole time when I was doing the clues that I didn't accidentally open a single one. Usually when I do these kinds of grinds, I always accidentally open at least a few, but not this time. Uh, if you want to take a look at the amount of charges or casts of uh, Dark Lure I used, it was not even 300, because I started with 10k of each of these runes. And how long did it take? Well, it was uh, 133 mediums that I had to get uh, after from what I started with. And I didn't really keep track of how many per hour I was getting done, but it was probably between five and 10. So maybe we could say like seven per hour overall as someone who wasn't trying to do them at max efficiency. So I spent about 20 hours collecting mediums so far in this video. And now we get to do the fun part of opening them, but not quite yet because I need to make some bank space. Otherwise I'll have to make a lot more trips back and forth to the POH to deposit the clue items in there. You know what's the best way to clear out bank space when you're a group Iron Man? You dump it all into the group storage, like shoving everything under your bed or into the closet to clean your room. I don't want to forget to show the loot tracker, so here is loot from a bit over 2,700 eclectic impling jars. I got 128 medium clues from them. I got some other medium clues from fishing, but uh, for 128, if you multiply that by 25, it should have taken me 3,200 eclectic jars to get 128. So I was a bit lucky on getting clues. Because about half of these were in Puro Puro where I dropped most of the loot, it's safe to say I actually only got to keep about half of this loot or a bit more than half because whenever I'd leave Puro Puro, I'd have a few jars that got destroyed. So I'd be able to bring home a few items with me. So a little bit more than half of this is what I got to keep. The next set of bank slots costs 50 mil GP. My cash stack is at 32 mil. I do have a bunch of things I could alk if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I, I know I can freeze some bank space. I, I've done a decent job so far. I've got 40 open already, so I'll just free up a little bit more. At this point, I think my bank is about as empty as I'm gonna get it. I don't even know the last time I saw triple digits for the amount of bank space taken up, so it's a nice feeling for now. It's gonna take a long time to open the mediums, mainly because of the master clues. They're one out of 30, so I should expect about 16 master clues along the way. I currently have six master caskets, so we'll see how many I have by the end. There's a common misconception with medium clues that there's a special boots drop table. There is not. The boots are the same drop rate as everything else, except there are a few items at the bottom of the list that are a bit extra rare. So the elegant is extra rare and the unicorn masks are extra rare. So in terms of the collection log, these are actually the items that you want to get and be excited about. Ranger boots are one out of 1,133 per roll. You can see here that you get an average of four rolls per casket. So if we take 1133 three, divide by four. It's not the exact amount because that'd be going by the assumption that if you get 1133 rolls that you're guaranteed to get the drop, which is not the case, but this is close enough to the drop rate to avoid having to do any real math. It's one out of 280 for Rangers. We got 502 medium clues, four Pagasian crystals, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. the first master. Fifty left to go, halfway through them. And this next one is gonna be number 400, which gives the clueless clue guaranteed at 400. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hey, the first pair of Rangers, let's pick those up. Nice, that was at uh, 408. And still got 228 more clues to go, so theoretically there's hundreds of more ranger boots waiting in here. Every single clue is going to have even more. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I I'm so glad just to at least get one. Don't get me wrong, I am very glad to be getting all these master clues. It just takes so much time. That's okay, I was prepared for it. Ooh, 
Ooh, the Bando's Cloak. That's good. We need that for a Master Clue step. And also, that is Collection Log Slot number 900. I forgot to mention that before. I completely forgot about that until I just got it right now. Really good item to get for irons. I forgot my spade. This is the greatest pain. <laughs> no! Oh no, we've only got five more. Five more chances to get a second pair of ranger boots. Three, two, one more. <laughs> We got another collection log on the last one though. Well, we got the one pair at least, and that's what matters. Now let's look at the collection log slots. I'm at 915. I started off at 856, so I gained 59 collection log slots from this medium clue opening. I'm gonna take a minute to clear out the bank. Let's check the number of master clues. So I started with six. I did not have to drop a single one. I got up to 22. So I got 16 masters. So that was exactly the right amount that you would expect in the amount of mediums I did. I got every single one done not drop any and then we'll take a look at the collection log for medium clues i'm now 101 out of 115 it is looking very very filled out and the loot tracker 502 medium clues i don't think i mentioned before i got the two extra clues when i was afk fishing before i started opening them but here's all the stuff feel free to pause and take a look yeah 16 masters ranger boots though man the ranger boots <laughs> can finally put one of these pagasian crystals to use but wait, let me put on the ranger boots just to say I wore them once before they become Pegasians. Hey, where's my leak points? Okay, <laughs> let's attach these together. Yes. Boom. Imagine some uh, Guns Chili style edit with the boots. It's my first time ever having Pegasian boots on any kind of Iron Man, or even Ranger boots for that matter. I never got them on an Iron Man before, not including the League, but I never got them on my UIM, never got them on the Hardcore, but finally got them on the Group Iron. This means the Dehyde boots are out. Pegasians, you're in. Arma, you're on the bench. And by the bench, I mean POH. I suppose I should show you the stat differences. So with the Dehyde boots, we get 7 range accuracy but we do get the prayer bonus. With the Pegasians, you do not get the prayer bonus, but you get 12 range accuracy. Plus the defense is better. It's plus four versus plus five for everything. I'm fishing Karambons now as I'm editing this video, and I was checking the times. You wouldn't think it would take that long just to open up clues, right? But as I said before, because of the masters, the amount of time it took me was over eight hours to open these 500 clues. And that's the story of how I collected and opened 500 medium clues. I'm not opening all the masters because I am gonna be saving them for a big master clue opening video, probably in the very far future. And like usual, on the side of everything else I've been doing, I was fishing Karamblons and I got almost a million fishing XP throughout this video. And speaking of Karamblons, I'm gonna start off the next video by dipping into those and getting the cooking XP up a bit. With all that said, you can check out my duo teammate Spoot dog's progress videos link below in the description thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed and i hope that you have a great day and i will see you again next time